it's strange to think that it's been eight whole years since we said our final goodbyes to the survivors of Oceanic Flight 815. And whether you liked Lost's finale or not, it's impossible to deny that the show changed television as we know it. With its endless mysteries like the smoke monster, the elusive Dharma Initiative, and polar bears, it became the first water cooler show for the internet age. It put names like J.J. Abrams, Carlton Cuse, and Damon Lindelof firmly on the map, and it changed how audiences consume content, pushing television into the digital age. Every episode of Lost is now streaming on Hulu, but not anywhere in the UK. Which makes this the perfect time to look back on ABC's landmark series. Here's how Lost changed television forever. Yeah, there's their... They're dead. He les a tué. It, it killed them. He les a tué tous. It, it killed them all. Guys. Where are we? Lost's pilot episode was the most expensive ever made at the time. Not only did they ship a decommissioned Lockheed 1011 to Hawaii, but there were lavish special effects and a huge ensemble cast. The whole thing reportedly cost between 10 and 14 million dollars, which may sound like nothing in today's television landscape. For example, Boardwalk Empire's pilot reportedly cost 18 million dollars, and Game of Thrones regularly shells out 7 million per episode, but back in 2004, that was a hefty investment, especially for Lost's network, ABC. At the time, ABC had slipped in the ratings to fourth, and the network hadn't posted a profit in seven years. Dropping millions of dollars on a pilot was out of the question, and even Michael Eisner, then head of ABC's parent company Disney, called Lost a crazy project that's never going to work. Lloyd Braun, the chairman of ABC, loved the script so much that he took a chance on Lost and pushed the show through to full production. Braun actually got fired before the show even aired, but his gamble paid off. Lost's premiere pulled in ABC's highest viewing figures since the year 2000, and the first season racked up 12 Emmy nominations and the show became the fastest selling show ever internationally. One of the key factors to Lost's success was its cast. While the show featured a lot of recognizable faces, such as Party of Five's Matthew Fox, Dominic Monaghan from Lord of the Rings, and Harold Perrineau from Oz, its ensemble cast featured a lot of lesser known actors. For some, like Evangeline Lilly, it would be their first big breakout role. Others, like Jorge Garcia, Naveen Andrews, and Yunjin Kim, had characters specifically written for them, leading to a cast that helped shape their roles, and it showed. For an American TV show, ABC brought one of the most diverse casts to primetime TV ever, including South Korean, Nigerian, English, Australian, Irish, and Iraqi actors. Just over a year after US troops invaded Iraq, Lost featuring Saeed, a former Iraqi Republican guard as a hero in the series, showcased a universal and welcome element of humanity. Lost's ensemble cast also featured a number of strong female characters like the badass, no-nonsense Anna Lucia, Juliet, who was willing to sacrifice everything to do the right thing, and Kate, constantly being the first to volunteer to take part in any form of risky excursions. The women in the show weren't hindrances to the plot and actively led the show forward. When Lost premiered in 2004, Facebook was still exclusive to Ivy League colleges, Twitter was two years away from launching, and YouTube just wasn't a thing. Still, the series struck a chord with internet users, prompting fans to venture online to chat forums and IRC channels to discuss theories and piece together clues while speculating on what would come next. To fuel these fan theories, Lost also introduced multiple alternate reality game components that helped continue the canon outside of the small screen. The Lost experience was created in partnership with ABC and the show's writers to further engage with the audience via a variety of in-episode puzzles and clues left to be decoded by fans. This forward-thinking viral marketing, along with the addition of online bonus webisodes, helped keep the fandom satisfied while waiting for the next episode to air. In its second year, ABC took Lost beyond the small screen to connect with its growing online fanbase. 
podcasting was still in its infancy, but with the help of co-showrunners Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse, the official Lost podcast released in November of 2005. Not only were fans treated to weekly episodes of the podcast where they were able to speculate on the mysteries of the series, Lindelof and Cuse were regularly featured on the show, helping to guide viewers on this journey by giving them behind-the-scenes tidbits, tease upcoming twists, and answer fan questions. Before Lost, a showrunner's success was based on how many programs they had on the air at one time. But things began to change in 2004 when Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse brought Lost to the small screen. Their decision to stay with the show throughout its six season run helped cement them as important components to the series. The cast weren't the only celebrities. In an effort to help usher in this new brand of storytelling, Lindelof and Q's, or Dalton as the internet began to call them, regularly took the stage at conventions and press junkets to explain the show's mysteries, casting choices, and plot points to come, becoming the spokespeople for TV's new water cooler show. This influence is still seen today. Shows like Talking Bad, Talking Dead, and Game of Thrones post show featurettes all feature the showrunners. And while fan scrutiny was a constant for Dalton, even today, their role in the series helped change the perception of showrunners for good. In 2007, just three years into the show's production, Carlton Cuse and Damon Lindelof put their co-showrunner status to the test by announcing an end date to the most popular show on TV. The decision happened during a time before American TV really embraced the limited series model, and streaming services like Netflix and Hulu were just a pipe dream. At the time, networks kept their hits on air as long as possible. Instead of milking this ratings cash cow though, Lindelof and Cuse came to the decision to end Lost after its sixth season. The move gave the writing team a goal to meet, to bring the show's expansive tale to a worthy end, while confirming the ownership of the story laid firmly with the creative team instead of the suits on the corporate side. And again, we see this in Game of Thrones, a show that's leading to a definitive end. When Lost hit the airwaves, the series blew the doors open, showing audiences and storytellers a whole new world of storytelling possibilities on primetime TV. It was jaw-droppingly cinematic with its effects, intricate in exploring each and every character's story, even though sometimes you wish it didn't, and the supernatural mythology blended perfectly with the harrowing survival tale of Oceanic Flight 815. While most primetime broadcast shows tended to present formulaic procedural subject matter to TV audiences, Lost was an anomaly on multiple levels. I find myself drawn to infinite possibility and that sense of potential, and I realize that mystery is the catalyst for imagination. Now, it's not the most groundbreaking idea, but when I started to think that maybe there are times when mystery is more important than knowledge. I started getting interested in this. The mystery box style of storytelling popularized by J.J. Abrams and used by Lindelof and Cuse, along with the show's signature flashbacks, flash forwards, time jumps, and simultaneous timelines, all helped to deliver an episodic experience where the stakes were spectacular and always heightened. When Lost went off the air in 2010, multiple networks tried building on its success. Copycats like NBC's The Event, CBS's The Nine, and even ABC's Flash Forward failed to connect with viewers, and all were subsequently cancelled. Lost's audience thoroughly cared about the show's characters, and every new, minute discovery provided conversation fodder for days to come. Let's face it, we were all dying to know what was down the hatch, who the hell Jacob was, and I know way too many people who took Sharpies to their hands to write Not Penny's Boat. And even though the show has now been off the air longer than it was on, it's still a conversation topic. Its finale, though controversial, is still talked about, picked apart and overanalyzed. Lost is still as relevant as it was in 2004 and completely changed television as we know it. If you've got Hulu or the series on DVD, maybe it's time for a rewatch. If you want to come talk about Lost with me, I'm on Twitter at Lucy James Games. For more on all the latest movies, TV shows, and love letters to our old favourites like Lost, make sure you subscribe to GameSpot Universe.
Jimmy gets eaten by monster. The end. Cookie? Anybody have cookie? Yeah!